The methodology of this opinion is as important to think about as what it means in this particular application to abortion. Let's talk about the three concurrences in this opinion because they tell us a lot about the opinion, each of them. First, the Chief Justice's concurrence. He only concurred in the outcome of the case, not in any of the logic or the reasoning of the majority opinion. And what he said is, look, we don't have to do this. Today, we can just say that Mississippi's 15-week ban is constitutional, and we can leave all these bigger questions about overturning Roe v. Wade for another day. We have Brett Kavanaugh's concurrence, which says, well, women can travel to other states, which I think doesn't really appreciate how hard that is, and particularly how hard that is for poor women to pick up and go elsewhere, at, take out the time, take out the money, leave behind their kids. You know, we know that more than half of the women who get abortions in the United States are already mothers. More than 50% of the people who get abortions in the United States are already mothers of two kids. And then, of course, there's the concurrence of Justice Thomas, which is really explosive, because what it says is the logic of this opinion applies to other rights. Now, what the opinion says, the majority opinion in Dobbs, is that abortion is not protected by the Constitution because if a right is not listed in the Constitution, if it's not enumerated, then it has to be deeply rooted in our history and traditions. And we mean by that, that it existed at the time of the passage of the 14th Amendment. So if you step back and you say, well, that's the test for an unenumerated right, what about the right to contraception, Griswold? What about the right to same-sex intimacy? What about the right to gay marriage, Obergefell? And Justice Thomas says, yes, exactly. Let's go there. Let's take on those next. It's really helpful to read the dissent here because what the dissent says is the majority wants us to think that there are only two choices. Choice number one, rights are locked in at the moment that that provision of the Constitution is written in a very specific way. Or, says the dissent, the alternative is to think it's a free-for-all and everybody can just make up whatever they want if they're sitting on a court. And the dissent says that's not true. Those are not the two choices. What was that part of the Constitution at its core trying to protect? It was trying to keep the government outside of the most intimate aspects of your life. That did not mean, in the 19th century, allowing women to control their reproductive freedom because women had a very different status at the time that the 14th Amendment was passed. They couldn't vote. They weren't considered people in the way that men were considered people, legal people with the same rights. It wouldn't make sense to get as specific as that. But if we did take that step back and we said, what does it mean to have the government out of your private spaces, then yes, there is a line between the 14th Amendment at the time it was written and the right that was recognized in Roe and again in Casey. Mm -hmm.